Hello everybody! Hope you're doing great and are ready to learn something new about volcanoes and geology, in this case about the Krabla volcano system in Iceland. Located in the northeastern part of Iceland is a very interesting volcano system known as Krabla. This system has crafted beautiful landscapes and natural oddities. There's also a geothermal pool in the area which you can bathe in just like the Blue Lagoon on the Reykjanes Peninsula. Now the geological history of the system is pretty rich. Krabla was born sometime around 250,000 years ago when magma began intruding into the crust, creating a magma chamber. This chamber grew and eventually magma began erupting onto the surface through fissures that lay from southeast to northeast. Now, these eruptions were moderate fissure eruptions producing theolytic basalt. Krabla has lived through two cold periods which last for 90,000 years, followed by a 10,000 year warmer period. And during them, Iceland was covered in glaciers, so eruptions created tough mountains. During the last cold period, approximately 120,000 years ago, silica-rich magma entered the story. This magma had silica contents over 68%, meaning it was rhyolite. It was during this time a couple of rhyolite lava domes, like the 771 meter tall Hlíðarfjall, formed. Then, 110,000 years ago, the rhyolite mixed with the basaltic magma already present in the magma chamber, which eventually resulted in an explosive eruption. The explosion was amplified by the melting of the glaciers on the surface. The magma heated up the water, causing it to vaporize, and since steam takes up more space than water, it creates a lot of pressure, which creates a huge explosion. This eruption ended up producing 2 to 3 cubic kilometers of ash and other minerals, and the eruption plume would have reached heights of up to 40 kilometers due to the effects of the glaciers. With so much material erupted, the magma chamber collapsed forming a caldera that's 9 kilometers wide. After this, the system would become quiet for a while until its former activity resumed. Since then, it's been almost completely filled with tough mountains that formed during glacial periods. This is the largest eruption of Krabla by far, and on the VEI scale it would rank a 5, which is on the same level as the 1980 eruption of Mount St. Helens. Since the end of the Ice Age, Activity has been defined into three periods, Ludent, lasting from 12,000 to 8,500 years ago, Kvanstod, from 5,500 to 4,000 years ago, and the most recent period, which began 3,000 years ago, called Kverfjall, and it is still ongoing. This current period has produced the largest fissure eruptions in Krabla. In one such eruption, around 2,500 years ago, dubbed Kverfjall's fires, the activity got very close to Miva. That resulted in a large phreatic eruption due to the abundance of groundwater in the area. It left behind a huge ash crater which has a radius of 1 km. This single explosion emitted at least 0.17 cubic kilometers of ash and other minerals, which is not too shabby for one explosion. One of Krabla's signature pieces is Dimmeborgir. They formed in the most voluminous lava eruption of Krabla since the end of the Ice Age. The lava ended up flowing down a 63 km long river path from Mývat to the ocean in Skjálvanda flowy. In this area that is now Dimmeborgir, a large lava lake once stood. At 2 km in diameter and 20 meters deep, it would have been one hell of a sight. But how did these bizarre pillars form? Well, most likely they formed when steam from water that the lava was heating up cooled the lava above it, creating columns of cooler lava. Then, when the lava lake was emptying, these cooler areas were left behind, and they are these pillars we see today. The most recent activity in Krabla are the famous Krabla fires. They're famous for how they allow geologists and scientists to study these fires in great detail. One of these discoveries is that the plate drifting speed isn't the constant 2 cm a year around volcano systems. So in the 250 years between the Mývats and Krabla fires, the plates hadn't moved, but during the Krabla fires, they took a 5 meter leap in 9 years. Yeah, the Krabla fires lasted for 9 years, from 1975 to 1984. Not in a single eruption though, 
there were actually 9 distinct eruptions, which is quite fitting. But in total, there were 24 magma intrusions, so only 9 actually reached the surface. In the beginning, the eruptions were pretty small and short. Then, in 1980, the eruptions got more powerful and lasted longer, and from March 1980 to November 1981, five separate eruptions took place. The last one came three years later in 1984. In the end, 35 square kilometers were covered in lava, and the volume of the lava was 0.25 cubic kilometers. With all of the fissures combined, they spanned 11 kilometers. Despite the proximity to towns and an important power grid, none of the eruptions caused any damage to infrastructure. At least not the lava. Since the plates were drifting apart so rapidly, large, frequent earthquakes shook the area, with the largest being 6.4 in magnitude, and they caused a little bit of damage. So, that's the details of the Krabla system in Iceland. There aren't any cool Icelandic sagas, despite the large eruptions during Mývats fires in 1724-27, but all the geologic wonders in the area make up for that. It's truly a beautiful site to visit, and I recommend going there if you ever come to Iceland. I just want to thank everyone who made it here. Definitely leave any speculations and questions in the comments. It's always fun to read them. Other than that, I just hope you enjoyed. I also hope to see most of you in the next video, and thanks for watching.